This is my current setup for sketching familiars. Um, I have a second monitor on the side that has both the animal reference and the job reference. So in this case, I'm doing a loose sketch using the script calligraphy pen, combining a hyena with a jester or a joker. So, <laughs> mm. so the first thing I do is just do very light, very fast sketch of the elements of the animal that I want to do. And in hindsight, I probably should have done some sketches of the hyena itself and the jester itself. But um, it doesn't really matter. What's done is done. Um, I tried to pick reference that was both facing the same way. Sometimes I need to use some of the transform tools to make the images align. But in this case, I was using the top left hyena reference and kind of a neutral pose for the jester. I'm using the pen not only for the line sketch, but also adding in a few values a few shadows or a few darknesses to the fabric. Um, the main outline is very loose, but if I see something that I want darker, I will just scribble a little bit more to darken it. I actually reversed the color scheme in this simply because the composition lined up a little bit better with the hyena's mouth, where what is dark is white of the jester's outfit and what is white is dark. And it is still not obvious in this illustration because it is just a sketch. But I do just enough details to tell myself what is um, what is dark and what is light. And right here, I am actually trying to add in a little negative space. Um, I switched to white there, which I probably shouldn't have. I should have just erased. But again, it doesn't matter. So I decided to add in a little prop, um, a card, a joker, kind of like Hisoka from Hunter x Hunter. Uh, just, a little, just a little extra, kind of spur of the moment, adding in a bit more. Um, and that's enough for the sketch. So now I am switching to a large marker pen to do some color. And I am, yeah, I'm choosing the biggest one. I actually have multiple markers to color in the dog fur tone on the hyena. And I would, I, I think I'm doing this on a new layer and it is a multiply layer. So this means that I can draw it over, yes, it is a multiply layer. I can do this layer on top of what already exists. So for example, if I have here a blue background as well as a sketch layer um, the multiply kind of just adds it on top. So if it is here a red background and then I have the yellow hyena fur, it is orangish after multiplying. Um, here I'm just getting rid of that little white spot that I did before. I should not have done it in the first place. Um, So this is where I start to color in the clothing. And as you can see, I do not invest too much time into making it clean. It is just representing the dark areas of fabric from the reference photo. And as I mentioned before, I'm doing it in reverse so that instead of the right side being dark, it is the left side being, side being dark and vice versa. <clears throat> And this, seeing as I'm doing a lighter color, multiply always darkens. Um, so, okay, so I do multiply here. Um, and it does not have enough contrast with the fur. So I need to do something a little different. And so, yes, right here, instead of multiplying, I am doing a normal layer. And I am doing a normal layer underneath the sketch layer so that I can still see the sketch marks 
and having the two different types of color. And then one more multiply layer on top for details, I switched to my tiniest marker and I am just strengthening the darkest contours of the sketch. I am making a little more sense from what my previous self has left me with the initial color sketch and markers. So it is, um, I guess this is kind of what I was talking about before, where you do the sketch, then color, then ink. Um, in hindsight, I don't know if that even makes sense. There, I guess there is a reason that inking goes before color. But maybe it's all just in the phrasing that I want to... I want to see what your work would look like with a little bit more chaos, where you've relinquished control of what you want it to look like, and you are forced to just kind of let the drawing manifest itself without having too precise a tool to control it. Yeah, I will, I will bring this point up with you um, explicitly over Discord and get your thoughts on it. Um, Anyways, I'm just about done with this one, where it is one example of the Jester Hyena. I, I should have colored in that card. I don't, doesn't matter. And now for number two, uh, I will do the same thing. I will pick one Hyena face on the left, and then I will pick another Jester model, and then do that combo. So if the first one was posed slightly to an angle, just for the sake of variety, I will have um, something forward facing instead. And I will also switch up the colors because why not? So again, starting off with just a very basic scribble. I don't fixate too closely on how exactly I am cap capturing the look. I am just going for a vague impression. And this is actually, I think, maybe a little too scary. This this game is for children in the end of the day, um, in the same way that Pokemon is, where it has a high skill cap, but available to anyone. And the face that I just drew might be a little too, it's, I don't know, Gengar is kind of scary too. But I am in general trying to go for um, cute things. One of the mantras of the game is nothing bad ever happens. So this could be, uh, I don't know, that's, that's the point of sketching out a whole bunch of stuff. You don't really know what you're looking for until you see it. So this could make the cut, this could not make the cut, but regardless, I want to have this as one of the options on my page. So the sketch is super loose, super fast. I don't pay attention to all the details. For example, here, there are kind of those round things on the legs in the reference. I do not include them. Um, I am just going, I'm trying to capture the impression of what this feels like to me. One thing is that it is not that recognizable as a hyena. Um, I will make some changes to it. But, um, that is, I guess, just the nature of this, especially if I am going, if I'm working fast like this, that often I will get so wound up in the process of creation that I forget my goals. And the goal, the simplest goal is really, how do you create a recognizable hybrid of two ideas? This, I think, is clearly enough some kind of monster jester or monster clown, but is it a hyena that is I don't think that it is red as a hyena. So maybe the next drafts will do things that include 
more hyena-ness. Like for example, adding in a spotted mane. I, I might still have, I might still change this one to make it a little more spotted. But yeah, I, so I did a quick sketch, added some quick shadows, and now I'm doing a little bit of color, um, which was premature. I want to do a, I, I want to do some line work before getting into the color. Kind of a hybrid of a, a cross between a sketch and an ink layer. Um, I guess, because I did give the instructions of do color without inking. I think what I meant was just do color with more casual inking. Because um, this is still technically, I would say, an inking step. It is just a very loose inking, a, a low integrity inking, in the sense that this is not the final line work. This is just a version. And here I am modifying the shape itself. I had too stubby a neck. Hyenas have a long neck, so I want to have more hyena-ness. I should have done an even longer neck, but at least I was aware of the difference in my intention and in my execution, which is basically what art is noticing, how your intention deviates from what is actually on the page. I'm also doing when I'm doing poses, as you can tell, at the same time as the sketch, because I'm using very specific reference and trying to capture the pose. Um, and that is just because it is kind of my natural workflow. It is what's comfortable for me. Um, that is the ultimate goal in, in anything. Find, find what's easy, find what's fun. For me, having the character in a pose is just a better work experience than being um, forgiving with the pose. It's just more fun. It feels more like a body in space. And it's not a good pose by any means. It is, it's fulfilled with anatomy errors. But it is enough to get me excited about the piece, which is the heart of this project. So if the last gesture was, um, hmm, what was it? I forgot the color scheme. But either way, it is a different outfit for this one. So it is also going to be a slightly different color scheme. Um, we'll see exactly how it manifests. But again, it is not, the inking was not very precise. The color is not very precise and the underlying sketch is still there. It is not, I did not erase it. I did not do a clean version. I am doing this to kind of stress to myself that this is not a finished product. It is, I'm just having fun. I am doing, I am exploring different types of poses, different types of colors, different proportions of how much animal versus how much jester. This one, for example, is almost entirely focused on the job itself and very little is actually related to the animal, the hyena. I'm just experimenting with a wide range of what might be this project, this project of familiars. And again, we've been working on this um, and you're doing very well on this, but keeping a limited palette. I don't want to have too many weird colors flying around I want to keep it simple. I want to make it so that if I want to edit it, it's not too much work. Um, and of course, the colored background helps with stuff like this. So I'm allowed to use white now because my background is off white. It is red as it's red as white instead of just um, just paleness. And for some finishing touches, I put some white on the teeth, but I'm using the marker tool 
and the marker tool is kind of a strange one. It interacts, it has unusual interactions with white. So it confused me a little bit here, but I just need to, um, I need to layer it. That's kind of what the marker tool is all about. Having multiple layers makes it more opaque. Um, and I think I am, I'm overthinking it anyways. This is, this is a sketch. <laughs> 